question four. Write down the value of the number three and the number 7.432. So the seven represents the units. The four here after the decimal place represents the tenths column. And the three here represents the hundredths column. So you can refer to this as just hundredths. You can refer to it as three hundredths, because that's exactly what it refers to. You could also technically use three out of a hundred as a way of representing it, or you could also refer to 0 0.03. But I'd say three hundredths is the answer that makes most sense to me. Part B, round 7.432 to the nearest whole number. So with this being the units column and the decimal point following it, that is where we're going to round in order to um, in order to do the rounding. That 4 will not change that 7, which means we're going to be left with a 7, and that is it. 7 is that number rounded to the nearest whole number. Part C, write down the number which is exactly halfway between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. Some of you will just know that that answer straight away is 0 0.75, and that's obviously good if you can identify that, but for those that aren't so sure, if you want to find halfway between two numbers, you are basically finding the average, the mean of those two numbers. And if we add those two numbers together and divide by two, that will give us 0 0.75. Part D. Write these numbers in order of size. Start with the smallest number. So they all, at the very beginning of the number, have a zero. So there's nothing that differentiates any of the numbers from each other based on the first digit, the units column. If we look at the next digit, we have a one here, a three here, a four, a zero, and a three. So that zero is gonna tell us that that is gonna be the smallest number because nothing is as small as that. No, no other number starts 0, 0.0. Then the next one we had was the one. There was only one digit that had a one in the second column, so I can put that down. And then after that, I have two choices here. We have a three here and we have a three here, both of which are smaller than that four there. So actually we can just write that 0 0.4 at the end. And then as far as these two numbers go, they both start with a zero, they both start with a three. And if we look at the digit that comes afterwards, one has a five and one has a zero. So from that, I can write down that 0 0.306 is the next smallest number, followed by 0 0.35. Lastly, part E, write 0 0.31 as a fraction. So if you want to turn any number, especially a decimal, into a fraction, we first of all start off by writing it over 1, because any number can be written over 1. What you have to do then, because technically that is a fraction, but what you have to do there now to answer the question is, this, when it says a fraction, is implied no decimals. So we need to make the top of this fraction big enough that you won't have any decimals anymore. So in other words, that disappears. If you want to make decimals disappear, you want to multiply by tens or hundreds or thousands, as many tens as needed in order to make this decimal point jump to the right of all the numbers, or the numbers jump to the left of the decimal place. Two place value jumps is all you need for this, which means if I multiply by 100, that decimal is going to disappear. And of course, I have to do the same at the bottom. What happens then is that that 0 0.31 times 100 gives us 31, and the bottom of that fraction is 100. What you would do now, as much as we have no decimals for a fraction, you also need to make sure that it's simplified. So although we've made those numbers bigger in order to get rid of the decimal, you would then look at this fraction and ask, well, is there anything that top and bottom can be divided by to simplify it? In this case, there's not. So 31 out of 100 is your final answer. Done.